Hi there. Welcome into the OUA Basketball Show, folks. Championship weekend. My name is Griffin Porter. If you know that already, that means you've been joining us on this run all season long. So thank you very much. And if you're just tuning in because you know, holy crap, there are two great championship games coming up this weekend. I better tune in and learn what's up. Then we're happy to have you here too. Uh, We've got some great guests for you today. So we're going to get right into it here. Uh, This whole weekend sort of centers around the Carlton Ravens as they get both teams into both championship finals. There's a lot to talk about, so we're going to start with the women, where it'll be the Ravens heading out to Kingston to take on the Queens Gales in what's sure to be a great game. Carlton handed Queens their only loss of the entire season when they beat them handily 64-32 to on January 27th, so I think you learn a lot about Carlton by the fact that they gave Queens their only loss of the season, and you learn a lot about Queens in that sentence too, because, like I said, only one loss all season. Uh, You can be sure that this incredible Gales team will have learned from that 64-32 to loss, and I'll tell you why I know that, because I sat down with OUA Coach of the Year, Claire Meadows, the head coach of the Queens Gales, and she told me all about it. And after we had Chris Chang become the first ever head coach to join us on the OUA Basketball Show last week, we've got another head coach this week, Claire Meadows, the head coach of the Queens women's basketball team. Coach Meadows, thank you so much for coming on the OUA Basketball Show. Yeah, thank you, Griffin, for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. Um, So I want to start by going back a bit. I met you briefly for the first time at last year's Final Eight, which to this day is one of the most Uh, fantastic experiences that I've ever had covering U sports that crowd that you guys had last year and the run that you went on from the seven speed seven seed the host spot in the tournament uh how much have you guys as a team tried to build on that fantastic run from last year has that played a role in this season yeah I think you know going into last year's nationals um we we believed that we belonged there um, and obviously had a, a great tournament and, and came out with a bronze medal. Um, and that gave us, you know, obviously an added level of confidence moving forward. Um, and it, it's been our focus this year to get back to, to where we, we left off last year. Um, so it was a great experience for us. We learned a lot from it and um, have been building off of it ever since. Yeah, well, you've certainly done everything you can do to this point to get back to where you were last year. 21 and 1, and like you lost great players to graduation this summer. Sophie DeGoody, chief among them. Uh, how impressed are you with the way that your team has taken another step forward this year, even after, like you said, how great last year was? Yeah, I mean, I think after last year finished, um, there was some some added energy in the program. Um, a lot of players stayed over the summer and put in a lot of work, and you know, I think I think that led to us getting off to a, a great start this season. And um, you know, we've really just been focused on what is in front of us and the task at hand, and and really staying focused in the moment. Um, and we ended up having a great season because of it. Yeah, well, speaking of uh, staying focused on the task at hand, of course we have the Critelli Cup coming up on Saturday, but in betu- in making the finals of the Critelli Cup, you guys have secured your berth at Nationals. How hard is it to balance preparing for the OUA finals while also trying to get a head start on the final eight because they come so close together back to back is there like do you have to keep your team focused on the the next game or are they are they ready yeah you know what we're we're only focusing on Saturday right now that's um you know that's that's the most important piece to to our journey um and we'll take care of Saturday and then after that focused on be focused on what what is next um and that's the approach we've taken all season right be in the moment be where your feet are um and so nothing changes right now and uh, all of our conversation all of our our energy is directed to to Saturday night absolutely uh and now when you look at the 
way that your team has won games this year. A big thing that stands out to me, at least, is the three-point production. You're the best shooting uh, three-point percentage team in the province. How much of that is, like, a deliberate game plan? How much of your offense revolves around getting those good open looks from three? Yeah, we talk a lot about... um just hunting the best shot possible. Um, we have a lot of different people uh, who can shoot the basketball, and we have you know, people who can ta- attack the basket, people who can play inside. Um, so we really take what the defense gives us, and if they take away one thing, then we'll attack them another way. Um, but I think we have such a good three point shooting percentage because we share the basketball and really try to find the best shot possible. Absolutely. Yeah. The ball movement is great to watch with you guys. And just before I let you go here, because I know that you've got a lot to do. Um, we've got the Carlton Ravens coming into town tomorrow night. They've had a great playoff run. They took out the defending national champs in TMU. And then they took out the MVP in Sarah Gates without like tipping your hand too much. Is there anything you can tell me about the Ravens and what you're sort of looking for them to try to do? Yeah, you know, we know it's going to be a competitive game. Um, They've had great defense all season. um, And, you know, the last time we played them, they took away a lot of what we wanted to do. Um, So we're learning from that game. We'll come in better prepared. But at the end of the day, it's going to be it's going to be a battle. Absolutely, it will. It's going to be a fantastic game between two great division rivals. I'm really looking forward to it. Coach Meadows, thank you so much for joining us and good luck on Saturday. Thank you so much. Take care. A big thank you again to Coach Meadows for coming on the program. You guys know that we love getting that coach perspective and of course a big good luck to her and her team for Saturday's game. But we also got to give a good luck to former guest Callie Pokernick and her Carlton Ravens. We've got friends of the show on both sides of the matchup. So I'm really looking forward to that clash. I think it's going to be an instant classic. Two phenomenal teams. There's a lot to look forward to in that game. And there's also a lot to look forward to on the men's side because over there we've got a battle that's just about as storied as you can get in OUA basketball as the Carlton Ravens will be hosting their forever rivals, the University of Ottawa GGs, with the winner taking home the Wilson Cup. I was able to sit down with Ravens color commentator Corey Branken to discuss everything there is to know about this Ravens team and the matchup that awaits us in the Wilson Cup final. So if there's everything you need to know, you don't need to listen to me talk anymore. Let's get right into that with Corey. And my next guest here today on the OUA Basketball Show, you can see on the sweater there, representing the Carlton Ravens. She's been doing color commentary for the Ravens this year. Corey Branken, thank you so much for coming on the OUA Basketball Show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Yes, well, here's hoping it lives up to your expectations. Um, I, I brought you on here today. We've got, obviously, the men's Wilson Cup final. It's a clash of the Titans out in Ottawa, the GGs against the Ravens. You've got the Ravens expertise, uh, so I wanted to come at it from that particular angle. And this team, if we go back a fair bit, it really, like had some moments where you thought that maybe this wouldn't be a year that Carlton would be in the Wilson Cup finals. They had a lot of new faces after a lot of player turnover, and there was that bad weekend in Toronto where they lost two consecutive games. Um, but they've turned it around since then. Uh, what Have you seen anything that you could really attribute to this turnaround? I think it's honestly just the winning mentality that comes out of the Carlton Ravens basketball program. We saw, like you said, a lot of new faces, a lot of guys that, you know, are in first year that traditionally with this program, you you wouldn't see play in their first year at Carleton. But mm-hmm. those players mm-hmm. like MJ Okado and Reggie John Serafin, like, you know, you're not they're putting up good minutes and giving a lot of really great contribution in their first year really playing for the Ravens. So I think it's that winning mentality that is drilled into every single Ravens player that's really been a difference maker absolutely it is yeah and I mean you talk about that winning culture I think that starts obviously from the top with head coach Taffy Charles Um, he's had this really unique challenge like you said of something that Carlton doesn't usually do in playing these first year players 
Uh, have you seen anything from Taffy? <laughs> Obviously, he's tough on the bench, but have you seen him uh, soften to the first-year players at all, or does he hold them to that standard? I think he holds everyone to the same standard to a certain degree because that's what he expects, and I think it brings out better players and better outcomes for them. He holds everyone to a very high standard and wants them to put their best foot forward every single night, and I think that has been a huge part of them turning this season around is all of them now started to hold themselves a little bit higher um, and really wanted to produce for Taffy. Yeah, and I... I can speak for Sad. He holds everyone to a high standard, even if you're asking him questions after the game. <laughs> uh, we love Taffy here on the OUA Basketball Show. And of course, the big storyline with this team, as much as the young players have really stepped up, has been the veterans, the trio of Warnholtz, Vreekin, and Shepard, Aiden Warnholtz in particular. Uh, for those who have maybe only seen the Instagram highlights, what does he bring to this Ravens team like on every possession? Yeah, I think Aiden brings unwavering leadership. And I think that's super important because the offense is going to come for Aiden. He's a phenomenal scorer. He has a great basketball IQ and he's able to see the court really, really well. But he brings leadership and he also holds guys accountable out on the floor. You can see Aiden talking to everyone after almost every possession, trying to get them to do better every single possession because there's always things that you can be working on. And I know too himself, he's not the type of player that, looks at his stat sheet because he knows exactly, you know, after a night what he did wrong and what he did right. So he holds himself to a really high standard. And I think that rubs off on the rest of the players. So yes, his offense comes naturally. He's a, he is a pretty good defender as well, but it's that unwavering leadership, I think, and great communication as well that come that Aiden really brings to the Carlton Ravens basketball program. Yeah. i I think that's perfectly put, and obviously you've seen it firsthand all year, so it makes sense that you would have the great answer there. Now, the matchup, we got to talk about the matchup. The Ottawa GGs, the eternal battle for basketball glory in Ottawa and in Ontario. Uh, Carlton 2-0 and against the GGs this year, a big win at the Capital Hoops Classic, and then another win a couple of weekends later. What did you see from those wins? Like, what... Where do you think Carlton had the advantage in those two games? Yeah, I think, I think again, it came from that big three from Carlton, you know, in Warren Holtz, Breakin, and Shepard. Um, one thing that they struggled with a little bit this year was their defense, not necessarily playing the full 24 second shot clock on the defensive end and giving up some opportunities that weren't necessarily the cleanest ones that you would want to give up. But I think in that game, it was just fighting for every possession that they could. Um, I think, too, playing at TD Place can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, and you've had those younger players that maybe had never even seen the Capital Hoops Classic at TD Place before. Right. So in Shepard, Warnholtz, and Breakin, they really needed to step up because they they had been in, in situations like that before. So, um, you know, looking at the box score, too, they play, each played over 30 minutes. So looking at that, it, it really came down to those three. Um, and I think, too, a big thing for Carlton this year has been second chance points. They're a phenomenal rebounding team, um, that and Grant Shepard especially, and other players like Elliot Bailey and Jabril Samaha. So that has been a really big thing for them. And they had 11 second chance points in that game. So that can definitely be a big difference maker overall. Yeah, Elliot, another one of those veteran players, uh, one of the only faces still left from when I was covering the team back there a few years ago. Well, Corey, just before we let you go, you you informed me that the, the number going around Carlton right now, 16-2 and all-time against the GGs in the playoffs. It's not a surprise that Carlton would have a winning record in the playoffs, but 16-2 and seems emphatic. Uh, are, are we going 17-2? and Can I Can I get a prediction? Or are we playing? I would really love to see us go 17-2. and I mean, obviously, I'm a, still a student at Carleton. I commentate for them. Obviously, I want to see the Ravens win. But I think it's going to be a pretty even matchup overall. I think it's really going to come down to defense and who who is able to play, you know, throughout the whole game and play strong defense the whole way through. So I think it's, it's going to be a good matchup no matter what. Absolutely. Corey Branken's been bringing the insight all year long on the Ravens broadcast there. And of course you'll be able to hear her this Saturday coming to you live from the nest when you're tuned in to that men's championship. It's going to be a can't miss game. Yeah, for sure. I definitely think it's going to be a, 
It's going to be sold out in the nest for sure. Absolutely. I can already picture that. So uh, definitely try to tune into OUA TV if you can. For sure. Corey, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And a big thank you again to Corey. And just like in the women, we've got a former guest of the show playing in this game. So a big good luck to Kevin O2 and his GGs. God, that's going to be a good game. Hard to believe there's only two games left in the OUA season, guys. We, it's been a long, long road full of fantastic basketball, but we are here championship Saturday. Uh, we will see you next week for the championship recap. We will definitely have a championship recap show, but in the meantime, make sure you are seated at 6 PM Saturday night and get everything you need beforehand. Get all your snacks, all your drinks, because you are not going to want to move away from your screen until the end of the men's game. Four or so hours later, it's going to be a night of incredible basketball, Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again to Corey and Coach Meadows. And enjoy the championships. We'll see you next week.